Hi and welcome back to Old School Rhythm and Blues Guitar. It is time for the classic intro or slash end tag lesson for the months of July through September 2020. I've got a lesson by request. I had somebody refer to me, refer to me a song by Mickey and Sylvia, Mickey Baker and Sylvia, can't remember her last name, called Love Drops and this person said the intro to that song is really cool. I'd like to learn how to play it. Well, I didn't know how to play it. I'd never even heard the song before, even though I love Mickey Baker. So, as I've done so often during the lockdown, I bought a double CD of Mickey and Sylvia's best A and B sides. And I listened to Love Drops and I, I thought, wow, this is a great song. And the introduction, you know, I'm not sure exactly how Mickey Baker played this, but I'm going to give you my best, my best guess. I have people all the time say, why don't you play the guitar part first? I'll do that sometimes before I teach it, but I really want you to listen to the original. I am a guitar hobbyist. I don't play live anymore. I've done some recording and I used to play live a lot. But most of the stuff I'm teaching, I'm just figuring out. And my playing is not as smooth and sometimes misses some of the, I don't know, the essence of the original. So listen to the original recording of Love Drops by Mickey and Sylvia. So anyway, here is my take on the introduction. I'll try to play it all the way through without a backing track and then we'll take it one phrase at a time. <laughs> Okay, there you have something close to what Mickey Baker is playing on the introduction to Love Drops. Again, a lot of these songs I'm hearing for the first time and I'm spending a little bit of time trying to figure them out. And I play them the best I can. It takes lots of practice to play these things smoothly like these great professionals. Mickey Baker was one of the, one of the greatest. But anyway, I think I know what he's doing or at least I have an idea. So I'll share that with you. It's in B flat. So we're starting out playing over the one, the B flat, and he's going to slide in to this chord shape, which is a partial first position or an F shape B flat. So sliding to the seventh fret of the third string, does that twice, also going to the sixth fret of the second string. And I hear him going to the root or the eighth fret of the fourth string and then getting keeping that chord shape getting the the third string and the second string so we got this something very close to that on the original recording even when I slowed it down using transcribe it's not always possible to hear with the other instruments going on but that's pretty close so he slides and right here, he does kind of a, a lick into the D-shaped B-flat. So we're still over the one here. So this, right there, I take a, a normal D chord and I put it right here between the 10th and the 11th fret. And this is what I think he's doing. So it's... Like a little slide into that chord shape, getting the first string. And he's just dragging the pick over that shape. And what I've done to the D shape is I've added my pinky on the 12th fret of the fourth string, which gives us our, our D or our B flat, our root note. So we got this. And then, right here, what I hear is making an F-shaped E-flat. And if you listen to the original recording, he mutes some notes, even skips some notes, so it's something like this. Or... I don't hear that. I hear him going back and forth between second and third strings. So let's play the whole thing. Here, I hear slide. I hear a slide. 
And my theory is that he's keeping the chord shape. Mickey Baker was huge on, on chords. He has a great book called The Mickey Baker Jazz, How to Play Jazz Guitar, Volume 1 and Volume 2, which are just chock full of chords and how to play with chords and play over chords and use chords. So it's my best guess, my hypothesis, that he's keeping these chord shapes, and that's what makes this intro sound so cool. So he's sliding again into the D-shape, B-flat, but he plays it a little differently. So we go from here, the E-flat, does something like that. So he's gonna get the fourth string, 12th fret twice and climb back, climb back up. So let's play the whole thing. And then, he's gonna go over the five. And what I hear him doing is again with the chords, playing over that, that second position, bar chord or this would be an F. So that chord shape, I've got my first finger on the eighth fret of the first string, my ring finger on the tenth fret of the second string, my second finger on the tenth fret of the third string. I don't know if he's making that shape and picking over it or if he's just playing single note. And this is a point in the recording where it kind of lose notes with the other instruments and what's going on. So I can't tell exactly what he's playing. But he does something like this. And gets back in to the one to kick off the song. So you could do it like this. Keeping that chord shape. And just picking up the first string, second string, third string. And then I hear that note, eighth fret of the third string. Then I hear from the tenth fret of the 4th string to the 7th fret, 8th fret of the 5th string, and right there I really can't hear how he gets back into the 1. A slide going from the 5th to the 6th fret on the 6th string works. Whether that's what he's doing, I can't tell for sure. I think that might be it, but again, a lot of these old recordings, it's really difficult. And every guitar player has their own way of doing things. So for me to say this is what he did and this is how he did it, I can't do that. What I can do is just give you an idea, and you can play around with it and see what works and what doesn't work. When I tried to figure this out, I tried just single note stuff, and I was getting nowhere, and I heard the slide, and then I remembered that D shape and Mickey Baker and all his chords, and so, thought, so I thought maybe he's using the chord shape and just playing over that, picking over that, which is, which is what he's doing, I think. So anyway, that is the introduction for Love Drops by Mickey Baker. Let me try to walk through it again slowly. Again, I don't have backing tracks. I'm working on that. I'm setting up a recording studio, but it's taking time and money, and then I have to learn how to do all that stuff. And as a full-time high school teacher right now, I just don't have that time. But eventually, I'd love to have backing tracks like other teachers do. That just makes it fun where you can play along. But for now, I say play along with the original recording. That's what I usually end up doing. So anyway, let's do it again. Slowly. Anyway. There you go. That is what I think the love, the introduction for Mickey Baker, Mickey and Sylvia's Love Drops. That's how I think it's, it's played. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. I do the best I can. If you know something I don't, please share it and I'll, we'll share it with everybody. We're all trying to figure this stuff out. But once again, the idea is to get ideas for how to play the guitar in this old school R&B style. And Mickey Baker was one of the giants. And he was a jazz guitar player, but his, his guitar playing always had a very strong blues, rhythm and blues feel to it. And he's one of my favorites. Check out the double CD, Mickey and Sylvia, all the A's and B's. It's fantastic. There's so much good guitar playing in there. 
and I'll try to feature some more licks and, and ideas from that as we go as we go on here. All right, I'll see you again before the new year with another intro or end tag to a classic R&B song. See you then.